This video is just going to show the basic operation of the Max Vapor email controller, how to connect it to Wi Fi, and how to link it with our dashboard. You can see this is unit number 73, manufactured on November 16th, 2018, which was yesterday. This unit's going to be going out to a customer on Monday, so I'm not going to remove the screen protector, but you should still be able to see fine. Oh, so before we get started, um, every single customer that has received a unit so far has emailed me and told me that the unit is much smaller than what they thought or what it looks like in the photos. I guess the way that I take photos, the angles I use or whatever makes the, the email look really big. Um, and it's actually pretty small. It's like four inches by three inches, the dimensions are, I think. So uh, I was just going to do some size comparisons here. Here is uh, like a pretty standard size rig next to the controller. I think this is an eight inch tall rig. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the soda can. All right, so let's turn on the controller. You can see our logo. We're on firmware 0.80, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth logos. So you can see a small uh, triangle in the menu bar. Uh, so that indicates a thermocouple fault. In this case, it's showing because there's no coil attached. But um, if it does show up when there is a coil attached, that means that your coil probably isn't going to work correctly or it's going to be going bad soon. So thermocouple faults are actually one of the data points that we collect from the email controller when you link it uh, with our dashboard. Um, so what that allows us to do uh, is track how many faults your unit has. Um, and it basically lets us warn you if we think your coil might be going bad um, and we can suggest you get a replacement or if your coil is still under warranty we can go ahead and get one scheduled for you automatically. So here are the basic options uh, enabled on the unit out of the box. Uh, you can set your temperature, FC mode that's Fahrenheit or Celsius, uh, auto off you can adjust the minutes until your unit shuts off automatically the system volume self-clean mode you can enable and disable Wi-Fi PID options for more advanced users and then once your unit is linked with our dashboard some other options get enabled like auto tune and uh, up temp mode which is popular with a lot of people and the first two things most people will do out of the box is uh, go into FC mode set it to Fahrenheit and then go to set temp and set their desired temperature I'm gonna set it to 710 just for the course of the video so you might have noticed the screen has flashed a few times uh, we've had a few people email us, uh, file bug report. Uh, that's actually the accelerometer is set a little too sensitive and it's detecting uh, me touching the unit and turning the knob as a, a tap. So we needed to tweak that a little bit. This unit actually hasn't been calibrated yet, so we might need to push out an update for customers that have units that are too sensitive. So you can see I just enabled Wi-Fi, the unit rebooted, um, and now the signal indicator in the menu bar is blinking. That means that Wi-Fi has been enabled um, and the unit is in access point mode, meaning it's not connected to the internet and it's waiting to be configured. 
So now you'll just want to get your phone or go to a computer that has Wi-Fi and pull up the list of available access points and you should see one called Max Vapor BT listed. Go ahead and click on that and wait for it to get connected. Once you're connected, go ahead and pull up the web browser and you should be redirected to the Wi-Fi configuration page that will scan for all the available access points. Um, we're going to click on the one that we want to connect to and then type in the password. Okay, I've typed my password in. I'm going to click join and uh, we're going to wait for it to connect. Uh, the first time you do this, it could take a little while. The radios have to do some calibration. Sometimes you might have to reboot the email. Um, so it looks like it worked. Uh, you should wait for the indicator to go solid. That means you're connected to the internet. Okay, the first time you connect, I recommend you reboot the unit. Like I said, the Wi-Fi radios have to do some calibration, so things can be a little weird the first time you connect to a Wi-Fi access point. Once the unit reboots, you can see the Wi-Fi indicator is solid. That means we're connected to the internet, and you should have two new options in your menu. One to check for firmware updates, and one to obtain an access code to link with the MaxVapor dashboard. We're going to request a code, and it looks like our code is 4888. So now we're going to go over to the computer and go to maxvapor.com and link our unit with the dashboard. All right, just go on over to maxvapor.com, uh, click dashboard in the top menu, and then we're going to sign up for an account. All right, I'm just gonna check my email on the other screen for the activation link and click it to activate my account, and then I'll be able to log in. Once you're logged in, go ahead and click Add Device. And then we're going to enter the four-digit code that we got off of our email controller just a minute ago. And now the device is linked, but you can see it's not online yet. So we're going to go back over to the email real quick. Okay, we're going to go back and turn the email controller on. And then the Wi-Fi indicator should go from solid to... A blinking heart which means that it's connected to our MQTT server and downloading credentials login credentials uh, and then when it goes solid that means it's connected and now it's transmitting data to our servers so anytime you see the solid heart indicator in the menu bar that means the unit's connected to our server and uh, basically every five seconds or so it transmits a bunch of data to our server uh, everything from the current temperature the time remaining in the auto off timer uh, the current orientation uh, like I mentioned earlier the number of faults that it detects on your thermocouple which is hopefully zero um, all kinds of stuff uh, and that goes to our dashboard and that lets us make charts and graphs and do analytics um, on all the data that is sent and then we can also send data back to your device and that lets you do the other things like remotely control your temperature and do all the other smart features So we'll go back to the computer now and refresh and we can see that our device is online now and we have a sync button which will let us send data back to our device when we set temperature profiles and stuff like that. 
uh, click on widgets. You can see some of the dashboard widgets we have that will give you quick access to certain information like up temp mode, your current temperature, how many emails you have online, uh, your auto off timer. And this is a more advanced screen, the raw MQTT data, but this is basically what makes everything else work. Um, and anyone else who wants to integrate and make their own apps and widgets that work with our uh, data and with your own controller, you can link into our API and access all this information and send data back to us as well. Uh, but most people probably won't mess with this stuff in this section. And that's uh, pretty much the basics of getting connected. This uh, video is getting a little long. I wanted to keep it to five minutes and we're going over 11 minutes now. So I'm going to cut this short and we'll uh, make a couple more videos coming soon.